Hello, everybody. Welcome to Josie's Art School, episode number 190. Today, we're going to draw a cozy bear. Now, this is a part of my winter series. You can actually find this in my craft kit um, where I uh, bundle together a series of three art lessons and I send everything to you, the canvases, the paints, a color wheel, a special surprise, and the instructions on how to do this in your own home. But then you can also come here and you can paint it along with me on one of these videos at, on YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this one and please make sure and connect with me if you'd like me to send you one of these kits. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So as always, I'll show you a little bit of what I'm using today. I'm using um, um, watercolor paint, uh, the Artist Loft brand, which can be found at your local Michael store. Um, I have oil pastels as well. Um, and this one is uh, Dollar and Ronnie. I think I also got this at, um, at Michael's. The good old Crayola crayons, the 64 crayons, which I use pretty much any time that I can because I didn't get to have these when I was a little kid. <laughs> and uh, you feel free to use whatever you have on hand. I am showing you an example on an 8x10 piece of copy paper, but I'm going to be working on a larger size paper. This is an 11 and a half by 14 just so you can see it. Um, but um, if you buy the, um, the kit that I have, you will have an 8x10 flat canvas. And inside you'll also have um, tempera paint. But again, you can use whatever you like. It just seems that type of paint goes really well with canvas. And let's be honest, a lot of us really like using that paint. For me, I like to mix it up a little bit. Um, and so that's why I'm using this today. And this is what you would call mixed media art. So it's basically taking all different types of materials and putting it together just to see all this lovely texture come together just from blending um, your different art supplies. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I normally will grid my paper. And what that means is I draw a a dotted or a dashed line down the middle of my page going both ways so that it can help me set you know the the head of the of the um, figure right where I want it and kind of gauge where uh, proportionally how high up I want to go so for example when I am drawing I want to make sure that I leave enough space for the ears and also I want to make sure if I'm going to add a hat that I'm going to leave enough space for the hat as well let me just bring you a little bit closer so that you can see it all right that's perfect all right so let's go ahead and get started I've gridded my paper but again you don't have to do it it's up to you and your preferences uh, the beauty of if you buy the kit is that you actually have the step-by-step -step instructions right in front of you as well, which is what I do when I'm in an art class. I will give my students the step-by-step -step instructions so they don't have to necessarily stay in line with what I'm doing. But I also want to encourage you that if you want to do something different, feel free to do that, okay? All right, so I, again, I'm going to be using a Sharpie because um, I want you to be able to see it on your screen, but you don't have to use a Sharpie and I would encourage you um, if you get a little bit hesitant to use a pencil with an eraser and then just use a sketching motion so the side of your pencil as opposed to straight up and down all right so I'm going to go ahead and draw the head now it does not have to be perfect a lot of times for me I just like to get something on the paper so that I'm not so overwhelmed by what it looks like so it's kind of like an egg shape on the top and then I'm just going to close the line on the bottom and that will serve as the head of the bear. And then actually I'm going to start to build uh, that, well, it could be actually a turtleneck if you wanted it to be or a cow neck. I think I'm going to make mine into a scarf. So that's the shape of my scarf. And right now it looks a little bit like a crystal ball or uh, a gumball machine yeah i actually have a lesson on gumball machines um inspired by wayne uh Thibald, if you ever want to look that up all right so then i'm going to start to do the outer area of uh the body 
So as you can see, just from here, you can kind of do a few different things with this shape. Okay. And so this is actually going to turn into the tails of the scarf. Now, as you can see on this example, we put the tails of the scarf together. I'm showing you an example where it is set apart, but you could also do it like a windy day and have them floating out to the side of your paper as well. I should mention that I am working in portrait mode, but you can feel free to do it in landscape if you want, which means the long side is down. And what's great about that is you can probably add two or three different um, bears to it if you want to. So again, make this your own creation. This is just the inspiration that you're working with. All right, so now I have um, the scarf here, and so now I'm going to add on the body shape. And so this is the inner part here of, of the body, almost like the belly of uh, the bear. And I want him to be a bit bigger. So I'm going to do some jagged lines here on the sides. And you can feel free also to add the arms there as well. I'm not going to have the arms showing on my example. All right. So from here, you see the head and the scarf and then the sketching for the body. All right, so here's just the base of what you're doing. And now you're gonna come in and be a bit creative on how you're going to create the face. So again, I'm gonna show you one way to do it where it looks like his fate, his mouth is hidden underneath his scarf. But as you can see here, this is done a different way where it looks like the snout is fully showing. So you decide what the which way you would like to do it. So if you're doing it where the, spout, the snout is showing, you're going to put that line above your scarf. Okay? So I'm going to do it with it below. And so basically, if you're doing it the same way I'm doing it, you're going to make a upside down U shape or almost like the opening of a cave. You're going to add in his nose or his snout and then line for his mouth. Now you could add in a smile on his mouth, right? Actually, I'll do that so you can see what it would look like. Okay, so you can see already it's starting to come together. All right, so now you're going to add the eyes. And again, these eyes look like they're looking straight ahead. I'm going to make a more circular shape, but this is a more realistic eye right here. So you can always try that. If you want to do this eye, it's just like a smile and then a frown on the top and then a smile and a frown. Okay. So now I'm going to add the ears. It's got kind of a teddy bear look right now. Okay. And then here you can see that you can see like there's some layers on this, these, these ears. You could add that on your ears as well. So it has that fuzzy look to make it look more realistic, right? Again, you can choose how you want to do it and you can erase it if you don't like it. Okay, so let's add his eyes. So again, if we're doing eyes like this, um, you would just then do maybe a lid. So you'd add a little a frown inside and then the circle and then make sure and make a, uh, leave an opening or a white spot in the eyes so it has some light that reflects on it, okay? All right, so for me, this one kind of looks like, well, that is the happiest bear ever, isn't it? <laughs> A little twinkle in his eye. And you could also get really fancy and add like eyebrows or eyelashes if you want. I'll add some eyebrows. And you can see right away these bears have some kind of personality, don't they? All right, so now I'm going to add the inner ear. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do much coloring. I'm going to let the color of the paints really fill that in. And then you can decide what kind of hat you want your bear to wear. So you could even put a birthday hat on it if you wanted to. Give him 
put a hat with a brim on it. Maybe he's a, a train conductor. You can add some design to it if you'd like. We'll get more fancy with it later. But there's the basic drawing of the bear. And then from here, you're going to decide, well, how do I add some texture to him? So you could add just little lines on his face. You can also add some pattern to his, um, his um, uh, the tails of his scarf. I'm also going to add some texture to make the face and the body match. And then just think about what kind of pattern you would like to add to your bear's scarf. I'm doing something almost like a lightning bolt, so it's just kind of an up and down motion. And you can decide to do a different type of pattern up here on the uh, around the neck if you wanted to, or you can mimic that same pattern. All right, so that's your basic foundation there. Now, this is when you get to play with color. So um, you can continue on if you'd like. So let me give you some other suggestions. Now with this example, there's really nothing in the background, but if you wanted to, you could also have some sort of scene, like trees or maybe a mountain scene right behind him. You can have them overlapping a little bit if you wanted to. And so it looks like it's a bear that's, you know, in his natural element out uh, in the mountains, yeah? All right, so from here, you're gonna start filling in with color. And so you can decide to maybe do the bear first or add the color on the mountains or whatever you decided to do on your background. But again, just kind of experiment. Do some things that maybe you haven't tried before. And that's the beauty about having your own imagination. That while I am here and I'm showing you just the basics of how to create um, a project that is pleasing to your eye, I know for me as an artist, once I get started um, with creating something, I um, can kind of take it from there and be inspired by what it is that my teacher has shown me. And I really do invite my students to do that as well. All right. I have a funny story about a bear. Um, for, a, for a while, we uh, lived in um, a place called Pikes Peak, uh, Colorado. And, um, while we lived there, there was a little town called Manitou Springs, and my daughter at the time was, I want to say she was in kindergarten, and they had a summer camp, and so, um, you know, it was really awesome. We were, we pretty much lived right near uh, Pikes Peak, like a mile away, and so it was kind of a great experience to be able to go to this little mountain town, because we got to see uh, <laughs> um, animals in the wild all the time because of the area that we lived in. Well, one day they had to have uh, an evacuation drill or a lock-in drill, I should call it, um, because there was a bear sighting on the school grounds where the camp was being held. And so it was one of those funny things that we went to go pick her up um, one day from um, her camp and we're like, oh, how was it today? And she's like, oh, there was a there was a bear cub on our playground. So basically, the bear cub had gotten away, and you know, of course, they were making sure the kids were safe because you know, mama bear, that's a real thing. 
uh, you do not mess with bear cubs. So they had kept the kids inside until the authorities were able to come and, uh, and safely remove the bear without any fear of someone being hurt. So yeah, it's been very fun to have a life where we have real life experiences like that. I wonder if you have ever been in contact with a bear up close and personal. It's definitely one of those things that reminds you to respect nature, right? So you can see right away as you start to add color to your design that it really starts to bring it to life. And for me, you can see kind of the style of what I like to do is I will dance around the paper and just put color in random places. And then from there, just kind of allow the painting to speak to me as I'm adding the color. Now, here's a trick that I love to share just to remind you. Sometimes we get a little stuck in our drawings. And so what I invite you to do is to pick your paper up off of your table, as long as it's not like if you're using watercolor paint, you need to be careful that it doesn't start to drip. But put it right in front of you like this so that it's sitting in front of you as if it were sitting on a wall. And what that does is it gives you the right perspective for you to experience the painting on a wall as other people would experience it. And then you decide whether you need to add more to your bear or maybe even the landscape that you've put around the bear, right? So as you can see very easily now from, this, from the time I started to now, you can really see this bear coming to life. And I hope that you see that happening over there on the other side of the screen with your drawing. Now for me, if you've not done this before, I highly recommend this to use your crayons and your watercolor paints together. And if you have oil pastels, even better to really um, just allow the oil and the water to work together. It gives such a beautiful texture and um, I think uh, just a beautiful experience to the eye to have these different um, materials working together. That yellow looks amazing. This is my oil pastels. I have had these oil pastels, I want to say for two or three years, and it's, they, they really are, they didn't cost very much, I want to say maybe seven, eight dollars, and they have lasted me so long, and I really do love using them anytime I get the chance. I actually teach now in a, um, in a preschool, <laughs> and it's so funny because one of the students came to school today and he said, I told my, my mom and dad about our oil pastels that we use at school. And I'm like, well, good for you. I hope they buy you a pair <laughs> or buy you a, a kit of them because um, I am a firm believer that it's never too early to let students experience good art supplies. I think sometimes that is where um, we get this idea that only certain people are creative because you may have been handed um, some supplies that really weren't the best quality supplies. And so what you think is that you're not good at using watercolor paints per se. And what it actually is, is you didn't have a good quality watercolor paint to work with. And so I try my best to always have good quality. And you can get good quality at not uh, very high prices. You just have to know what brands really do. Um, take it very seriously that they want uh, people to have a good experience with the art, with art and creativity. So. All right, so as this is coming together, I wanna be a little more brave and not just do the traditional browns with the bear. So I'm gonna add some brown in, but I want to pick a different color to really challenge myself now. Let's see if I actually do that. Okay, I think I'm gonna add some of this gray. Maybe leave a little bit of the white showing. What about you? What will you challenge yourself to use? Okay, maybe a little bit of this tan. 
oh my goodness. <laughs> Even as I put it in, I'm like, I'm not sure about this. All right, I'm going to keep going. Here's a big tip about when you are doing any sort of painting. Um, sometimes you'll look at your painting and maybe you don't like how it's coming together. And many times I will say to an art student, please don't throw it away. Just leave it and come back next week. Because for one of the schools that I worked in, I was only with the students once a week for 45 minutes. And it's amazing what kind of perspective you get when you walk away from your drawing for a week and come back to it. Um, and there's something to be said about letting the materials that you use, the paint and the watercolors and, and your crayons even, to just sit and let it work and activate with the paper that you're using. I know it sounds silly, right? Um, but it really is something that if you've ever... Um, what, what do we say? I hate my work. If you've ever felt that, try putting it away for even a week and coming back to it and seeing if you really hate it. Because there have been times when I've thrown things away and we've done a lot of moving as a military family. And I will think about something that I thought maybe wasn't so great. And I kind of think, wow, I wish I could look at it now. I bet it was better than I thought it was. Oh, it's not the color I wanted. <laughs> I had this um, this watercolor um, tray and some of the colors you can tell it was the kids favorite so there's not much pink left and there's not much of my fuchsia left so I need to just go invest in another uh, tray and watercolor so I can have those colors back. Okay, so it's definitely coming together very nicely. I hope you feel that as well. If you have one of my art kits, I want you to not feel like you have to simply use the tempera paint that's in your kit. But if you have crayons or colored pencils or even watercolors that are handy, use those as well. Like really make this your experience with your painting. You don't have to do the colors I'm uh, using. Please make sure and use the, um, the color mixing guide that I put in the kits to show you how to blend primary and secondary colors together um, to really give you a full experience um, as you're creating your project. All right, so I think I'm at the place where I'm pretty comfortable with letting it sit for a while. Maybe add a little more color to the scarf. And we'll call it good. All right, you guys. Well, here is my bear. <laughs> Please send me a copy of your bear. I'd love to see it. Maybe tag me on Instagram. I'm over there under Robin Norgren. And I hope you enjoyed this project and I hope that you're enjoying your art kit. All right, see you later. Goodbye.